You say, well, I brought it upon myself. Yeah, well, who didn't? We all brought it upon ourselves. We've all brought bad things upon ourselves. God doesn't say, come to me as long as somebody else brought it on you. He says, come to me, all that are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Come to the throne of grace. It's open 24 hours a day. You're welcome to come at any time. Now, if I could tell you there's a cure, there's, we've discovered a cure for everything that ails mankind. We've discovered a cure for all the pain, all the trouble, all the problems, all the fears, all of the things that exist in the world, all the violence, all the anger, all the hatred, all of the, the negativity, all the depression, all the sadness. If I could tell you, if I told you there's a cure for it, wouldn't you want to just pay attention real close to know, OK, what's the cure? Well, first, let's talk about what the illness is, what the sickness is, what the condition of the world is, because there are three plagues that Adam and Eve brought into this world, three plagues that their sin unleashed into this world, that hell unleashed through Adam and Eve. And these three things Jesus came to cure. These three things Jesus dealt with. These three things Jesus fixed. Jesus fixed it all. Jesus cured it all. And all that we have to do is grab a hold of what Jesus did for us. And we will walk in the power of God and the freedom for which Jesus has paid for us. And we will experience a life beyond our wildest dreams. Are you ready to be cured of all your pain, all that ails you, all that depresses you, all that makes you sad? That's why Jesus said after he rose from the dead and Mary came to the tomb and she thought he was the gardener and she's in tears and she's crying and Jesus looks at her and says, woman, why are you weeping? Why are you weeping? He says, why are you weeping? Why are you crying? And they, she thought they'd taken him away. But this, listen, this is the question Jesus asks everybody now is that why are you weeping? I'm risen. Why are you weeping? I'm risen. Why are you depressed? I'm risen. Why are you sad? I'm risen. Why are you lonely? I'm risen. All right, let's get to the three plagues. Go to Genesis chapter three. I got to show you this. Verse 10, after Adam and Eve sinned, plague number one that hit humanity as a force from hell that Jesus cured and Jesus dealt with through his death and resurrection. He said, after Adam sinned, God was looking for him and Adam said, so I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So plague number one through Adam's sin was fear. Fear is the first plague that, that affects humanity. Fear is the cause of, of anger and negative emotions. Fear is the fear is the is the mother of all loneliness, the father of all rejection, uh, rejection, loneliness and fear. All of that comes from this fear. I was naked and I, I hid myself. I felt rejected. I had to isolate myself because I felt rejected. I had to hide myself because I felt lonely. So loneliness, rejection, all a result of fear. So plague number one is fear that results in loneliness, rejection. And number two is found in verse, oh, I believe it's in verse seven. Look at what he says in Genesis chapter three, verse seven. And the eyes of both of them were open. This was after they ate from the tree God told them not to eat from. And they knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. Now they already now they were naked the whole time. You know that, right? They were naked the whole time, but they weren't ashamed. They were naked the whole time, but they didn't have any guilt about it. They were naked the whole time, but they didn't have any. They didn't feel bad about it. Now they feel bad about it and they're covering themselves. What do they really feel? What they really feel bad about is that they feel the guilt and the condemnation of what they have done. So the second plague that was unleashed from hell through Adam and Eve was the plague of guilt and condemnation, guilt and condemnation. Now, you can't imagine the things that we do when we're condemned because a condemned heart is a sick heart, a guilty conscience and a condemned heart is a heart that can't pray. A guilty conscience and a condemned heart is a heart 
that gets hardened, a heart that becomes bitter. A condemned heart is a heart that stays down. When you feel condemned, you stay down. You beat yourself up. You pull others down with you. A condemned heart just keeps, you just keep beating yourself up for what you've done. This is plague number two, guilt and condemnation. And then plague number three is found in Genesis chapter three, verse 16. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception in pain. You shall bring forth children. So now here we have sorrow, which is sadness and depression. We also have pain in bringing forth children. It's not just pain. Come on. How, how many know it's not just pain uh, in giving birth to a child? It's pain in raising children because you can you can you can be medicated and give birth to a child without pain, but there is not enough medication in this world to last 18 years of raising that child. <laughs> and then he says, your desire will be for your husband. Well, now she already desired her husband. They desired each other, but this word desire is not, is not the word that is translated in English as desire in a positive way. It's actually your desire will be to control your husband, but he will control you. So now where does a controlling spirit come from? It comes from Genesis chapter three, verse 16, a controlling spirit where a woman wants to control her husband and then the husband control tries to control her. A woman tries to dominate her husband and a, and a husband tries to dominate his wife. This, this, it's, and it's not just men and women, it's it's races of people. It's nations trying to dominate one another. It's 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 races of people trying to look at the world that we're living in, folks. It is a result of the three plagues that Adam and Eve unleashed, that hell unleashed through Adam and Eve. Fear, loneliness and rejection is one. Then uh, guilt and condemnation is two. A lot of Christians live under condemnation all the time. They beat themselves up for the smallest things that they do or the biggest things that they do. God doesn't beat us up, but we we do a better. We do a good enough job. Even Satan doesn't beat us up that much because he's like watching us beat ourselves. We're going like this and he's just watching. He's like, I don't need to add anything to it. You're doing a pretty good job beating yourself up. But how's that working for you? It's not. And so and then the third thing is this inferiority complex, because it's inferior. It's a it's a sense of inferiority or a spirit of inferior inferiority that makes a person become shy, detached and feel small about themselves or braggadocious and acting superior as a cover up for the inferiority that they feel inside. A person who's a bully, a person who acts superior is actually a person who is operating in a spirit of inferiority, but covering it up by trying to act bigger, talk bigger and feel bigger because they're really small inside. And all of that came from hell. So Jesus went down there, kicked the devil around, conquered death, conquered sin, conquered the grave, comes up with the keys and says, I'm unlocking all of this fear. I'm unlocking this thing that this fear that's been holding you back. I'm setting you free from that. I'm unlocking the prison of loneliness. I'm unlocking the prison of rejection. I'm unlocking the prison of condemnation and guilt. And I'm unlocking the prison of inferiority. You're not going to feel that way anymore. You say, well, how does that? Well, where does that show up? How does how do we know he does that? Well, go back to Revelation chapter one now in verse five. Here are the three cures for the three plagues. And each one of them matches exactly what the plague is. So the first plague is fear, rejection and loneliness. And what's the first thing that it says about Jesus to him who loved us? So what does love do? Well, love is the antidote for all fear because perfect love casts out fear. And the only perfect love that exists in the world is God's love for us. So perfect love casts out fear. That's number one. And then and, and perfect love casts out loneliness because you think a person if you if you think that a person can cure your loneliness, you are right and you are wrong all at the same time. You are you are wrong in the fact that any human being on this earth born to a man and a woman can cure your loneliness. But you are right that there is a person that can cure all loneliness and his name is Jesus. Amen. There is physical evidence 
that rejection has more of an effect physically and emotionally in a human's life than just about any other feeling that, that they ever experience. And why is that? Because Satan wants you to feel rejected. And therefore, that's why God has loved you in Malachi chapter one, verse two, in the New Living Translation. I have always loved you. I have always loved you. You see, it's not that God's ever God ever stopped loving you or it's not that he started loving you when you got good or started loving you when you became a better person. No, 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 no. He didn't start loving you any during your lifetime. He has always loved you. Before you were born, before you were saved, before you were in your mother's womb, before the world began, he loved you. He has always loved you. You existed in his heart before the world began. Let us make man in our image, God said. God, love said, because God is love. Love said, let us make man in our image. You existed before the world began and God loved you then. He's always loved you. Love is the cure to rejection, to loneliness. The love of God is the cure to rejection, to loneliness, and it casts out fear. Look, love is the healer. Love is a healer because it undoes the basic problem of separation from God. How many remember the scripture in Romans chapter eight, verse 37? Nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Love is the healer because it undoes the basic problem of separation and the basic fear of not being loved and not being lovable. Love is the healer. Love is the healer. Love is the deliverer. Love sets us free. It wasn't just Jesus that rose from the dead. It was love that rose from the dead. It wasn't just, listen to me, it wasn't just Jesus that Satan tried to kill and destroy and rid the world of. It was love that he was trying to rid the world of. It was love that he was trying to destroy. It was love that he was trying to crucify. But the fool, that old foolish slew foot devil he didn't know you can't keep love down. You can't crucify love and leave it there. You can't bury love and have it stay dead. R love will rise again. And love did rise again. Love could not stay down longer than three days. That's why theology, I redefine what theology is. You say, are you a theologian? Yes. Well, you don't have any, ma you know, masters of, of theolo theology and divinity. <laughs> but you know what I have? I know how much God forgave me. And he who has been forgiven much loves much. I know that. I know that. So I've redefined Theology has been known by man as the study of God. But guess what? If 1 John 4, 8 is true, and it is, that God is love, then theology is really the study of love. And why did Adam and Eve eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? They questioned God's love. Oh, he's holding out on us. Love doesn't hold out on you. Oh, he's holding out on us. They questioned his love. Watch this. Go back to Revelation 1, 5. To him that loved us, that's the cure to rejection, loneliness and fear. And to him that washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now, when it says he washed us, if you go through the scriptures, you'll find that he doesn't just wash us from our sins. His blood redeems us from our sin, washes us from our sins, but it washes us from our guilt. It washes us from a guilty conscience. So it washes us from guilt and condemnation. What that means is even though you and I might fail tomorrow in some area of our life, that does not have to condemn us and does not prevent us from being in the presence of God. We don't have to go get washed again. We've been washed once for all and will never have to be washed again. We have been washed by the blood of Jesus once. And now when we fall, we don't measure our relationship with God based on our holiness, but rather we come to God on the basis of his blood. The Bible says we can boldly come to the holy place 
the holiest of holies in Hebrews 10, 19, by the blood of the lamb. We don't come to God's holy presence by our, by our, by our sinlessness. We come by his blood, by the blood of Jesus. We have access to the throne of God's grace. Aren't you glad it's not a throne of judgment? Aren't you glad it's not a throne of accounting? Aren't you glad it's not a throne of fairness and justice? It's a throne of grace. Therefore, we have access to it by the blood of Jesus to come to his throne of grace, to receive mercy and grace in our time of need, 24 hours a day, no matter what your need is. You say, well, I brought it upon myself. Yeah, well, who didn't? We all brought it upon ourselves. We've all brought bad things upon ourselves. God doesn't say, come to me as long as somebody else brought it on you. He says, come to me, all that are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Come to the throne of grace. It's open 24 hours a day. You're welcome to come at any time. That's, he didn't just wash you of your sin. He washed you of the guilt, too. You don't have to walk around guilty. You don't have to be guilted. We got to stop letting people guilt us into buying Girl Scout cookies. Guilt us into... <laughs> They asked the Girl Scouts. One girl broke the record. They said, they said, how'd you sell so many Girl Scout cookies? She said, you look them in the eye and you make them feel guilty until they buy more. <laughs> it's like Girl Scouts, man. I'm afraid of girls like that, man. I run. <laughs> he washed us. See, this deals with guilt. This deals with condemnation. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 says, There's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Right? So, plague number one, what was it? Fear, which includes loneliness and rejection. And what's the solution? He loved us. What's the second plague? Guilt and condemnation. What's the solution? He washes us in his own blood of our sins and the guilt of our sins. And what's the third plague? The spirit of inferiority. And what's, what's his cure? And he made us kings and priests. The cure for inferiority is understanding your new bloodline is no longer through Adam, but it's through Jesus. Because once you're born again, you have a new bloodline. And your ancestor if you really want to do some Ancestor.com stuff, you, all you need to do is trace back from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, all the way down to Jesus, and that's your ancestry. And you know what? There are some crazy people in there. But, it, but, 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 but then all of those people were just people, instruments God used to bring Jesus into the earth. And now you're a direct, not only a descendant of Jesus, you're his twin. Just like Jacob and Esau were twins, Jacob represents us in the Old Testament and Esau represents Jesus in the Old Testament. And Jacob was just holding on to Esau's heel. Jesus was, Esau was the firstborn, but Jacob was holding on to that foot, holding on to that ankle, holding on and taking that blessing. I'm taking that blessing from, uh, from Esau. And Jesus is, but Jesus is different. He doesn't need us to take, grab, steal, pretend to get the blessing. He freely gives it to us. The moment we accept him as our Savior and Lord, he says, you know what? He says, you know what, to quote, um, to quote what, the, what the father said to the prodigal son, to the, actually to the older son, when the older son got mad when the prodigal son got blessed, what the father said to the older son was, my child, all that is mine is thine. Why did you worry? Why did you get afraid? Didn't you know that everything that's mine is yours also? And Jesus wants you to know all that is his is yours because Romans 8, 15, 16, and 17 says that we are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. The cure to all of man's pain is in this verse. He loved us, he washed us, and he made us kings and priests. And we are seated with him now in heavenly places. 
Yeah, you used to live on Loser Lane. You used to live on Bad Attitude Avenue. <laughs> you used to live on Check Up From The Neck Up Corner. <laughs> but now you are <laughs> seated with Christ in heavenly places. And you have been relocated to the state of grace where all things are yours for free. If Jesus didn't do it all, then we better leave here right now and go finish it. But thank God that John 1930 says, Jesus on the cross says, it is finished. All that's left for us to do is stand under the spout where his blood poured out and believe that Jesus did it all. Well, there you have the cure to all of humanity's pain, all of your pain. And it all starts with the relentless love of God. Are you living under the spout of his love? Well, today it can all change. His spout is not a little backyard drip or a backyard spigot. No, it's more like the Niagara Falls. It's, did you know that the 75,000 gallons, 75,000 gallons of water flows over the Niagara Falls every second? And that's just a glimpse of God's love and how it overflows into your life every second. God's love is, is alive and is powerful. And he loves you more than words could ever uh, describe. He's standing right in front of you with his arms open wide right now and waiting for you to receive that love, that embrace, which, by the way, is the cure to yours and all of humanity's pain. Mine, too. God has been so good to me. His love has never failed. He wants nothing more than to give you the gift of righteousness and empower you to walk out his master plan and live every day expecting his favor, his power, and his joy. You know, when Jesus died on the cross for you and me, for every pain we've ever felt and for every sin we've ever committed, he said, it is finished. Jesus has done everything for you and me. All you need to do is receive it. And listen, listen, before I go any further, if you haven't received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, let me pray with you right here and right now, wherever you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you're doing right now or thinking about doing. Jesus forgives it all. I want you to pray with me right now and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, be sure right now. Pray this prayer. Just say, Heavenly Father. Just say that. Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus Christ into my life as my Savior and Lord. I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. The blood of Jesus cleanses me from all my sins and breaks the power of sin and Satan forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Listen, if you prayed along with me, you are now a child of God. Welcome home. Email me at the address on your screen or reach me on social media. I'll send you my free book called The Power of a New Life to take you through the next steps of a victorious walk with God. And thank God that you prayed that prayer. Now, before I finish today, I want you to know I'm on a mission and you're on a mission with me. To every person that believes in the gospel, we're on a mission to see 30 million souls saved and lives transformed. And your sacrificial gift today will be used to equip blind people or people who can't read with solar-powered audio Bibles. Man, we're doing something about people who can't read and can't see. And when you support this ministry with your gift, I want to personally thank you by sending you an awesome toolkit. This collection of resources just for you to empower you to live an extraordinary, abundant life by the power of the Holy Spirit with my book, The Cure, which is what we talked about in today's teaching along with several other things. But this is The Cure to all that ails mankind. My announcer tell you more, I'll be right back. Watch this. Our Christianity is expressed as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people around the world. Will you help Gregory Dickow reach these precious people from around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ? With your financial support, we are able to send solar powered audio Bibles to people who are blind or can't read. That is why Gregory Dickow is asking you to stand in faith with him today and help us reach as many people as possible. 
As a special thank you for your support, Greg Wiedekow wants to send you The Cure, The Antidote to All Pain and Unhappiness, adapted from today's teaching for your timely gift of $25. For your generous gift of $50 or more, he'll also include the CD-DVD combo, Living Beyond the Pain, and today's message, Freedom from Pain and Unhappiness. Or you can get it all for your exceptional and sacrificial gift of $100 or more. This package will come with everything listed, plus Greg Redekow's recent four-CD series, Not Guilty. And as a special bonus for calling in the next hour, Greg Redekow will send you his book, Silencing the Accuser, The Power of a Guilt-Free Life. This amazing brand new book will deliver you from accusations, guilt, and condemnation. Please don't wait. Greg Redekow needs to hear from you today. Live operators are standing by to take your call. Or you can go online right now to gregredekow.tv. Well, you know what? Jesus is the cure to all that ails mankind. Get a hold of this teaching along with all the other materials in the special collection. And I want to inspire and encourage and challenge everyone watching to do something in the next few moments that will matter throughout eternity. It's not just about getting materials, it's about getting the gospel to the world. So many people have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ in their own language. Others have never heard the gospel because they're blind or they've never learned to read, and we're doing something about that. That's why I need your rather urgent help today. Your gift makes it possible for us to put audio Bibles, solar powered, people that don't have electricity, solar powered audio Bibles into the hands of precious people who have never heard the gospel or have been minimized or forgotten because they can't read. We're doing something about it, gang. Help me. Let me pray for you right now. Father, bless every person watching today's broadcast. Bless every seed they sow. And Lord, give them hope that they can walk in this cure of your supernatural love and power. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, don't forget to connect with me on Facebook or Instagram. I am there and waiting for you, and I'll do my very best to personally respond to each and every person that I possibly can. So reach out to me, and don't miss our next broadcast. Remember to set your DVR so you never have to miss another episode. I can't wait to see you then. God bless.